Hello, my lovelies, it's Erin here, and it's time to get set up for September 2022. This month we're going for a space theme with some colours that I don't usually pair together, so it's fun to be challenged a bit. Also, does anyone else do a little mood board in the back of their journal like this when they're planning out a layout, or is that just me? This is actually my third attempt at a space theme. I've tried it for previous months and not loved the way things turned out, and I'm jumping in with watercolour this time, which I don't normally like using watercolour in my journal, but I picked up this new watercolour set from Stationery Pal. You can see it in my haul video if you'd like to, up in the top right corner. And it's really the only way to get the effect that I wanted for this theme, so we're gonna go with it. Because this is my first time using this watercolour set, it looks very clean and fresh. Before this, I was using a watercolour set that I picked up from my local dollar store cheap shop kind of place, and these are infinitely better, so it turns out the product does make a difference. Who knew? <laughs> the page we're working on here is the cover page. I'm just laying down a ring of watercolour just in similar colours to the stickers that I'm going to be using soon. I actually got those stickers out and matched it to some colours in the watercolour palette and also the colours of the paint pens that you can see on the left side here. And those are the basis for the colour scheme for this whole setup. So that's an orange, a yellow, kind of Gudetama yellow colour as well, some blue and a little bit of this coral pink red in between kind of colour. And now we're going to jump onto the facing page and start setting up the calendar while the left side dries. I usually like to do a whole page at a time for video purposes so that when I put chapters on the video if you just want to see the cover page you can just watch the cover page. Unfortunately with watercolour you have to let things dry so I'm going to jump around a little bit more than usual in this video. This is a pretty standard calendar layout for me. I've used this one a bunch of times. The way it works is that each of the boxes are three and a half spaces wide and then four spaces tall, and this is where I write down anything I need to remember for the month, things like important events, dates that bills are due, stuff like that. And all of the black pen you're seeing in this video is a Pigma Micron 03 fine liner. It's my preferred fine liner anyway, but extra so when you're using watercolor because it's a waterproof ink, so if you watercolor over it, it's not going to smear around and run and go all weird. I still use my old fine liners. I had some Bic Intensity and some Sharpie pens, and I still use those when I'm actually writing in my layouts and using them through the month, but when I'm setting up, I always want to go with the Pigma Micron. <laughs> I've used a blue metallic paint pen from Artex to highlight the top row there, which is for the initial for each day of the week, so an M for Monday, a T for Tuesday. We'll get to that part soon. And I'm just going to add some more watercolor along the top here to kind of tie the theme together. I actually really dislike the feeling of watercolour on the page under your hand when it's dry. It feels kind of crunchy and grainy and yuck, so I like to keep it towards the top of my layout if I can, but I'll also not sacrifice aesthetic just for <laughs> my comfort through the month, so I will put it at the bottom of some pages too, but for now I'm going to keep it at the top of this calendar. Just a nice calendar-hugging floating cloud of space dust. I guess. I don't know. You know when you see long exposure like star photos and they've got this beautiful swirly colours through it? That's kind of what I was going for here. And these are the stickers from which this whole theme's colour scheme has been derived. There are actually three packs of stickers going on here, which is why I need to sort them out a little bit. The stars and the blue and the orange planets are from Station Repal. You can also see those in my Station Repal haul from a few videos ago. And the purple ones are a gift from my lovely friend Rachel. Thank you, Rachel, you're so sweet. She sent them to me all the way from Arizona to my little Brisbane, Australia, and they arrived the day before I set this up, which I think is just such incredible timing. She's sneaky, she knew I was gonna do a space layout. I'm so sorry that you missed the September lettering on the left side there. Sometimes I just get really into the setting up process and I forget to check my camera, and it only records for half an hour at a time, so I didn't realize it had run out, and I went ahead and stuck my planets down on the left page. And I did my September lettering and I didn't realize that my camera had stopped recording, so that's a shame. But that's the cover page and calendar done, and so we're going to move on to the next spread here. On the left side I'll have my musings and goals sections, and on the right will be my mood tracker. Now, if you've come here expecting to see the washi tapes that I talked about at the end of my washi tape shop haul video, where I was like, these will be my September theme, I'm very sorry, I changed my mind. I do think I'm still going to use them for October though. The reason I switched them around is because I just love them so much and October is my birthday month and it felt right to kind of 
use them for something that feels very me and my birthday month just feels like the right time for that to happen. So you will still see them, it's just um, not this month. I'm deliberately going in with watercolour first on the mood tracker side so that it has some time to dry while I set up the rest of the stuff. And you know I love an arty mood tracker, so the way I'm doing this one, I have this ribbon of space cloud, I guess, that's winding its way across the page. And at the bottom in that little four space grid that I've drawn out already, I'm going to have four different little doodles that will each represent a feeling and emotion for that day. I got a bit carried away and forgot to add some of the elements of this, so what you're not going to see me do in this video is add tiny little numbers from 1 to 30 all the way along this ribbon of cloud. Those are going to be for the days of September. And then f next to each of those days, I'm going to draw the doodle for the corresponding mood. I also forgot to assign the doodles to the moods on the page, so you won't see me doing that either. But what I was thinking of was like the happiest on the left side to the least happy on the right side. So you can kind of just use your imagination, I suppose. And if you want to see what it looks like all filled in, go follow me on Instagram. I am at erinsmith.art and I like to share my after the pen layouts at the end of every month there. So if you want to see everything all filled in, you can do that. I always like to balance things out where I can as well, so I'm adding a little bit more watercolour just on the bottom left corner of this goals and musings block over here as well. Just trying to make sure that all of the colours are represented each time I use them, so there's a bit of blue, a bit of orange, a little bit of red going on in every time I use the watercolour. My little watercolour set actually came with one of these refillable water brushes, but I already had one, so I'm using the one that I already had. I'm also testing out some new paint pens for this video. These ones are from Artex, A-R-R-T-X. They are metallic paint pens, so they have that sort of silvery sheen in the light, and they're jewel tipped, so they have a brush tip on one end and a bullet tip on the other, which is a little bit finer. This lettering I'm doing with the bullet tip, but you'll see the brush tip on the next couple of pages too. I don't often reach for metallic paint pens. I have some other ones and I prefer the kind of normal solid matte colors a little bit usually, but for a space theme, then metallic just seems absolutely perfect. Because I know this mood tracker side is going to end up quite busy with a lot of little doodles on it, I'm keeping things kind of minimal as far as the stickers. I want to have a few around to keep the color scheme going, but I also wanted to have a decent amount of space for things to still breathe. So we're just gonna add a few little planets and stars. The star and planet stickers that I got from Stationery Pal, which is the ones that are yellow and orange and blue, are actually really thick stickers. They're similar to the ones I used last month for the dessert stickers throughout August, maybe even a little bit thicker. So I kind of have to go over them with the back of the tweezers to make them really stick down. Otherwise the corners start to lift up and I don't love that. And of course we have to add the little doodles that will be representative of my moods for the month. So assuming that I decide this left side is going to be the happiest and we'll move to the sad ones on the right side, which I think is how it's going to go. I've got a super happy little rocket, a pretty happy planet, the star is there to represent a kind of eh mood, and a little UFO at the end for if I have a bad day. I have found I don't have a lot of bad days. so. I'm pretty happy to have a more complex doodle for the bad days because I won't be drawing it much. The middle of the road moods seem to be the ones that I end up drawing the most and I've learned the hard way from previous months that it's best to have some pretty easy doodles there because I'm going to be doing them a lot. So <laughs> rather than getting annoyed with them. Also, if there's one that you like less than the others, maybe assign it to the mood that you have less often because then you won't have to draw it as much and that's always good. I feel like I'm really not utilizing these paint pens to their full potential in this video, so I'm just going to add a little bit more uh, decoration here, just doing some little dots in the different colors to just add a little bit more something. It sort of looks like rain, but I was going more for space dust, you know, sparkly little stars, maybe something like that. But let's move on to the habit tracker. As always, I'm setting this up with my Lazy Girl Habit Tracker hack, which is to use my Fomemo MO2 thermal printer with this little calendar design that I made in Canva and a little bit Photoshop these days too. I've been adding the numbers on to my calendar. To begin with, I just kept them blank, but I've been adding the number for each day onto the calendar and I do that with Photoshop because I just find I have a little bit more control, but you can also do that with Canva. 
I'm just trimming these calendars down so that they will fit nicely in my journal without too much extra space. These are printed on sticky paper, which is really handy, so I can just peel them off the backing and stick them down like a regular sticker. But first, I want to get some decoration on the page, so I'm just going to work out how much space these will take up, and I think we're going to do the bottom of the page this time with the watercolour. And we're going to take it over to the right page as well, which will be the spending tracker, just so I don't have to wait for two lots of watercolour to dry. And if you really need to speed this process up, and I did this off camera, I didn't show it in the video so much, but grab a hairdryer. I have one of those curling blow dryer, what are they called? Like a, a round brush blow dryer where it has an attachment that goes on the ends that gives you that blowout kind of look, I guess, if you use it on your hair. I've never used it on my hair. I bought it for purposes of alcohol ink art a couple years ago. And I discovered that it works really well for drying watercolour on your page too. So if you need a bit of speeding up, that can do it for you. I'm just laying down each one of my calendars with a little copper line above with the paint pen so that I can write what the habit is that I'll be tracking there. And then for each habit every day, I will just add a little dot in the calendar space for that day if I complete the habit or I'll leave it blank if I don't. <laughs> We've got just enough room for a nicely brush lettered habit tracker heading along the top. So I'm gonna jump in with the brush tip end of this pen this time. I'm kind of just sticking to the navy of the, the two blue paint pens for my headings. I just feel like that looks good. There is also a lighter blue. And just a few stickers to keep everything consistent. We'll also add some of those little dots to make it feel like there's a galaxy moving through the back too behind the habit trackers. And I'm not going to go ahead and fill in the habits that I want to track for September yet because it's the middle of August and I don't necessarily know which habits I want to track yet. Sometimes things change. So I'm going to leave those blank for now. Moving on to the facing page, this one is my spending tracker. This is a tried and true layout that I come back to month after month because I just don't feel the need to change it. It works really well for me. So this is two tables, one on the left, one on the right. They have three columns each, so there's a thicker column where I write down the thing that I bought, a narrower column where I write down a category for it. So say I bought petrol for my car, I will put it in the car category. If I'm paying my rent, I put that in my life expenses category and so on and so forth. And then the last column is for the cost of the item, so how much I spent. And I put everything that I buy in here, everything. So at the end of the month, I can tally everything up by category and see where my money went. I move it into a big overall spending tracker at the beginning of my first bullet journal for the year. And then I can see where all my money has gone for the year, which is helpful when you maybe are trying to get rid of some bad habits. Maybe it's part of my control freakiness, but I just really like to know where my money's going all the time and it keeps me accountable. So it's a good system. I recommend it. The paint pen I'm using here, the white one, is not from the Artex set. They didn't have a white paint pen in that set, which I guess, how do you make white metallic? <laughs> it kind of makes sense. So I'm using one from my Peter Paul Press set that I use pretty often. It's my go-to white paint pen. I actually think it's better than the Posca. Turning the page, this next one is a two-page spread. Your girl's got a lot of social media accounts going at any one time. I've got, obviously, here where you're watching this, my bullet journal YouTube channel. I've also got an Instagram account where I share more bullet journal stuff and I have an Instagram account and a blog for my business as well, which is how I make my money to survive. So I like to try and stay on top of that content. It doesn't always happen, but having this spread really helps. So this is just another calendar, kind of like we did at the beginning of this monthly setup, except this one's got a little bit more space because I need to get a bit more specific 
but this is where I plan what my videos are gonna be week to week. It's where I plan what's going up on my Instagram, although that's a little bit looser, especially for my bullet journal stuff. It's also where I plan what I'm gonna put on my blog for my business and what's gonna happen on my Instagram and Facebook for that as well. Social media can almost be a full-time job if you let it. So I try to stay on top of things. I schedule most of my stuff. So this just really helps me to see what needs to go where and just stay on top of the cycle so that I can keep putting out content without feeling burned out and exhausted because that can happen. Thankfully hasn't happened to me yet, but hopefully if I keep doing this, it won't. I'm also gonna be away for a whole month early next year. So I need to stay ahead of my content schedule because I wanna make sure that there's still stuff going up for you guys to watch while I'm away without kind of interfering with my holiday. I don't wanna be editing videos while I'm traveling around Europe. So yeah, definitely helps to have this stuff planned out ahead of time. If you're ever not sure how to set up a calendar layout, I like to start from the middle. I like to have four days on the left side because I just find that easier and more comfortable to write on than the right page for me. Work out how many weeks are in the month because that will determine how much space you need to use vertically. So in this case, there is a short first week, one, two, three full weeks, and then a shorter last week as well. So I needed five rows. So I worked out the spacing for those, leaving a little bit of space at the top and at the bottom. And then I knew I wanted my boxes to write in to be five spaces wide by five spaces tall. So you can plan out that part and go back four days. So you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on the left page and the same on the other page. I add a task list to balance it out. And so I have a, a dedicated task list just for social media stuff. And I've left an extra space in between each box so I could put the number for each day of the month there because I knew I wanted a lot of room to write all of my data going on there. I didn't want the number to eat into that space. So that's why I've done things this way. And an extra row along the top so I could write Monday, Tuesday, etc. which I know how I set up my calendar. So I sometimes skip this part, but if you're sharing your stuff online, it just makes it a little bit clearer for other people sometimes when they're looking at it to understand how it works so that they can maybe incorporate it into their own stuff. I haven't added my little key that I use here. I like to use friction pens for this page for the actual use of it because then I can erase anything that I've changed my mind about. So I have a color coded system for that where I use a particular friction highlighter for each section for different platforms. Um, I haven't included that here, but if you'd like to see that, I've done it in previous months. You can see some of my previous Plan With Me videos, or you can jump on my Instagram and see what one of these content planner pages looked like once it was finished and fully used and planned upon and all of that good stuff. And then one last spread for this setup. This is going to be my weekly and I just was not keen to set up weeklies, four of them with watercolor. So <laughs> I've decided to skip the watercolor this time. This is another favorite layout that I go back to over and over again, where I have four columns on the left page and three columns on the right page. Each of them are four or five spaces wide. I can't remember exactly. I think it's five. And each of those columns is for a day of the week. So starting from Monday, because that's how I like my weeks to start. If you prefer to start on a Sunday, you can do that too. Your stuff will just look a little bit different to mine. I really find vertical weekly layouts work better for me than horizontal ones. Although the square one that I did last month for all of my August stuff was awesome that I ripped off Ruthie. I just feel like I run out of space a lot faster in a horizontal weekly layout than I do in a vertical one. So that's why I keep coming back to this kind of stuff. Also, if you've been following my stuff for a while, you might notice I'm not including a phone and sleep tracker this time. I found I just wasn't using it. I've recently started learning a language through an app on my phone, <laughs> you know, the one with the owl. So I'm using my phone a lot more, which just wasn't making me feel good about the numbers that I was tracking. I was like, well, yeah, I'm using my phone more, but I'm using it to learn a thing. So I think I'm okay with using it more. So I've just decided not to track that. And the same with sleep. I think there's something going on there with like my, knowing I'm going on holiday and going to a really different time zone. I don't mind if my sleep habits get a little bit messed up in between then and now because 
I'm gonna have to work hard to get them back on track after my trip anyway, which is not still until January, so, you know, heaps of time. But I just decided it wasn't the thing for me anymore, which is the beauty of bullet journaling. If something doesn't work for you anymore, or you find you're not using it, or you don't want to use it anymore, you just don't have to do it. You have the choice. I've introduced some washi tapes here that I haven't used throughout the rest of the setup and also a bit of a new color or, you know, not really a color, some black, which I didn't have elsewhere through the setup, but I really like these washi tapes. I'm using a few different ones here. The blue washi tape with the stars is from the washi tape shop Starry Sky set. It is absolutely gorgeous. And then the one with the feathers as well is from their Dream Catcher set, which also has moons and crystals and stuff. So it, it still feels appropriate. And then there's the little black one with the gold stars and moons on it. That's from Stationery Pal. There are links to everything in the description, of course. As always, some of them are affiliate links. So if you do use those links to make a purchase, I will make a little bit of money, which is very sweet and lovely. And I appreciate your support so much. I do always only set up the first weekly for my videos and then I do the rest off camera, usually on a different day because by this point I'm ready to just not be filming and setting up a bullet journal anymore because it can take a bit of time, especially when there's watercolor involved. I just find stickers and washi tape is a much more sustainable way to do that. And I'm just flipping back here to find out what the last few days of the previous month are that I need to carry over here. I like to keep my weeks fully together. So even though this is the first setup in September, only four of the days are actually in September and the first three are the last three days of August because that just makes sense to me. And here's the final flip through. I'm so excited that my space theme finally worked out for me because as I mentioned, this is a third attempt and this is the first time that I've liked it. So that's nice. I hope you've enjoyed setting this up with me and maybe got some ideas for your own September bullet journal. If you make anything similar to this, please, please, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you do. Hopefully I will catch you again in my next video next Monday. Until then, I hope you have a beautiful week. Stay safe and happy and I'll see you again soon. Bye.